This man got caught for one of the biggest cases of tax fraud and got away with it. This is Daniel Rigmaiden, otherwise known as The Hacker. Daniel defrauded the IRS by withdrawing tax returns from deceased people. His mindset was that if they were already deceased, then there was no harm in taking money that the government would otherwise just sit on. Growing up, Daniel never participated in society, stating the entire government system feels like a sham. After graduating high school in 1999, he lived his early 20s in different college towns in an attempt to get the college experience. Living under different aliases, his primary source of income was making money selling fake IDs. But in his late 20s, he knew he needed a bigger play if he wanted to continue living off the grid. He browsed a few dark websites looking for his next hit, and this is where he met Brett Johnson, well-known scammer who if you had a jailbroken cable box in the early 2000s, it was probably from him. Brett was previously caught for his scam, but struck a deal with the FBI to continue using the dark web in an attempt to bait people into breaking the law. Not knowing Brett was a mole, Daniel asked Brett about how he could make money quick and Brett would go on to give Daniel a detailed walkthrough about tax income fraud. When Daniel got the information he needed, he went ghost. The process of filing taxes one by one was daunting to Daniel, so Daniel used code in order to automate the tax filing process. The only manual work was to go to the ATM and receive the money. Daniel was strategic and used proxies and VPNs, which made it hard for the FBI to track him down. Daniel eventually hired couriers to collect tax returns from ATMs to then mail him lump sums concealed in toys and gifts. One of his couriers ended up getting caught by the FBI, who at the time the FBI believed was the hacker. During questioning, however, Ransom Carter admitted he just anonymously got offered $500 to pick up some cash at the ATM from the dark web. The FBI used Ransom as yet another mole. Daniel was ready for his next drop and hired Ransom to drop off $68,000. The FBI were forced to front the money given doing the actual act of fraud is still illegal, even if you're the FBI. Ransom played along and abided by Daniel's strict itinerary of cleaning the money, packaging it in a gift, taking pictures of each step, and receiving a date and directions to a specific 24-hour post office. The FBI was on a 24-hour stakeout when Daniel finally showed up late at night. Daniel made sure never to physically hand his ID to the store clerk and signed with his own pen. As Daniel left, he would pass the FBI agent literally feet away on the sidewalk. Considering that it was late at night, Daniel's paranoia of being robbed kicked in, and he began using counter surveillance techniques by swiftly walking down random streets and alleyways. The FBI agents anticipated he would have arrived in a car close to the post office, and for that, they would end up losing Daniel when he entered a subway station, successfully fleeing the scene with the $68,000 of the FBI's planted money. The FBI were temporarily defeated and admittedly impressed. Daniel felt the scheme needed to end after this near miss. He left for a solo backpacking trip in San Francisco with the intent of eventually fleeing the country and withdrawing the funds from his account. It was during this trip that the FBI would stumble upon the holy grail of information. Daniel slipped up one time forgetting to proxy his internet connection and the IRS were able to obtain and deliver an IP address to the FBI. A Verizon Air Card, which would now be called a Wi-Fi hotspot in our time, based somewhere in Santa Clara was their target location. The Verizon account was attached to a fake name with no address, yet the FBI was still able to track the Air Card to an exact apartment building and apartment room. Agents asked the landlords if they ever met the person from that apartment and they said no, he always paid with money orders. Again, the FBI went on a 24-hour surveillance in front of the apartment when they finally saw Daniel leaving. Daniel recognized the FBI agent as the same man from the post office. He would find himself on a foot pursuit where he eventually got caught. In a last ditch effort, Daniel would scrape his hands and fingertips on the ground to potentially hide his prints, but he since stated he was roughhoused while being detained. The FBI was finally able to track down the hacker's true identity and sent Daniel Rigmaiden to jail. While having some time to process the series of events, Daniel came to the conclusion that he was cheated in some way. He was confident that there weren't any loose ends and that tracking the air card couldn't have been enough for the FBI to find him because cell towers have miles of range with tens of thousands of IPs linked to it. Daniel declined being represented by a court-appointed lawyer and decided to theorize how he got caught instead. He concluded that the FBI were somehow mimicking a cell tower to track his specific air card. Daniel did not have hard proof nor access to a computer, so he requested that his shadow cancel printed out page by page Google searches for his research. Daniel was able to discover a keyword, 
Stingray, a device to track people's location by mimicking a cell tower, word for word what he theorized. At his court hearing, Daniel argued the search was insufficient to authorize and unlawfully done without a warrant in violation of the Fourth Amendment. He claimed the FBI did not explain exactly what it is they are going to search and what it is they are going to seize. Daniel's investigation revealed that the US government was using these devices without warrants for years. However, the jury ultimately found Daniel guilty on all counts, and he was sentenced to 14 years in prison. But the press got word of this, and it became viral news starting with a front page article in the Wall Street Journal. The government uses Stingray devices that violates your privacy was heard throughout the nation. This obviously raised concerns and educated citizens on how much power the government actually had in relation to our privacy. Coincidentally, following the press, Daniel received a letter from the US government, basically stating that they want to change his sentence to five years of time already served. If Daniel Rigmaiden went with a court-appointed lawyer, he would have faced up to 14 years and we may not have ever known about Stingray devices to this day. Daniel's court hearing shed light on our privacy and changed the way the law is conducted moving forward. To present day, Daniel is a free man and now consults with the ACLU and other organizations in ongoing litigation against the use of Stingrays. People might say, if you don't have anything to hide, then you have nothing to worry about. But Daniel believes maybe the things you don't have to hide today will be things that you have to hide tomorrow.